the eye is deceiving. Remember that. The eye can lie, and it often does. That's why it's important, especially in criminal cases, not to place too much faith in the story of an eyewitness. Many times the witness sees only what he wants to see. As you all know, I'm writing a book on the fallibility of eyes. Okay, witnesses. Professor, you ask for it. Okay, Larry. Thank you. All right, class, sit down. You all right, Larry? Now, what you've just seen was in the nature of an experiment. You've seen a visual demonstration of what I was telling you about before. The eye can lie. Now, you have five minutes to write down your version of what happened here. The nature of the action, description of the gunman, and what he said, if anything. Now, we'll compare your versions with the man himself who's waiting outside. All right, you've got five minutes. All right, now. Now, nine of you said that he was dark. Two of you said that he had brown hair. One of you said he was blonde. Four of you said that he was hatless. Six of you said he shouted indistinguishable words. The rest of you reported the words correctly. One of you said he wore gloves. And only one of you reported the time of the incident. Now, none of you were 100% right in reporting what you had witnessed and heard. Now, let's take a look at the man who tried to shoot me and got Larry instead. Come in, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sergeant Bob Conan of our police department. And this is policewoman Elizabeth Merrill. For your information, I've been working very closely with Bob, thanks to uh, Miss Merrill. Thank you very much for your cooperation. My pleasure, Fletch. Now, I'll take my Luger. Oh, sure. Where's Fletch? Oh, he should be here any minute now. Say, what did Captain Barnett say when you told him about Fletch? I haven't been able to see him. He's not going to like it when he finds out he's been appearing in the lineups. Captain Barnett, please. See, Fletch actually helped us solve two cases. Why, think of all the false arrests that would have been if it weren't for him. Sure, sure. Is the captain there? No, never mind. Barnett's already in the lineup room. Wouldn't you know? The lineup room. Uh, Captain Barnett, please. Sergeant Conan. What's my line? Don't be funny, Professor. Bob is trying to get Captain Barnett now. Well, ask him if he can use an educated pickpocket. Well, I could, Fletch. Try me. Barnett's running a show tonight. He doesn't know you've been appearing in a lineup. He couldn't possibly object once he knows. No, tell him about my record. 23 appearances in that lineup and 14 positive identifications of everything from a pickpocket to a firebug. He'll be all right, Bob. It's too bad Lieutenant Jones had to go on a homicide call. We'd be all right. But with Barnett. No, no, never mind. We'll be right down. Now, well, let's move. Barnett's starting the show. Fletch, maybe you ought to skip tonight and stay out of the lineup. You know, now that Barnett's got his promotion, well, he's lost his sense of humor. What do I got to lose? Worst they can do is pin a murder rap on me. Now remember, you'll see and hear the men in the lineup, but they won't be able to see or hear you. Any questions? Okay, start them up.
Take the center platform. Face us. Keep your hands at your sides. State your full name. Frankie Coyle. What were you picked up for? Speeding. What was the rush? The cops are chasing me. Well, what for? And they said I stole a car. Which car? The one I was speeding in. <laughs> Anybody identify this man? Okay, next man. Next man. State your full name. William Arthur Fletcher. What are you charged with? Take pocketing. Have you got a job? I have. You mean your job is picking pockets? I'd hardly call that a job. How do you mean? That's an art, isn't it? Don't try to be funny. Yeah. It's for you, Captain. Barnett talking. Yeah. Yeah? How long ago? Coroner get there yet? Okay. You get the pictures, we'll look at them when you get back. Diary? Let me have that name again. Okay. So long. What did you say your name was? William Arthur Fletcher. Fletcher. William Arthur. Hold for further questioning. Oh, no. But he couldn't possibly have done it, Captain. Why, the professor is no more a criminal than I am. Look, Captain, for the last time, Bill Fletcher's a good friend of ours. We hereby vouch for him. Why, he's a professor of criminology at the university. This line-up business was, well, it was just a gag. He's getting material for a book he's writing, that's all. Yeah, and I'm telling you both for the last time, I don't care if he's a professor or owns the college. His name is in her diary, and that makes him suspect, see? O'Hara, bring in the professor. And remember, both of you, friend or no friend, you're both on the police force, and this bird's under suspicion, see? Okay, O'Hara. Captain, I'm very sorry about what happened in the lineup. I want you to know it wasn't their fault. The captain wants you to answer a few questions, Fletch. Now, what is this? I've been answering questions for two hours. What's going on, Captain? Relax, Fletcher. I'll ask the questions around here. Sit down. Ever heard of a girl named Marilyn Harper? No, I never heard of her. Marilyn Harper was a neighbor of yours, lived just two houses north. Well, Captain, there are some people that live two houses north, and there are some that live two houses south. I don't know all of them. Don't ever remember hearing her name or seeing her before. No. Nope. She was a little brunette student of yours from September last to this February. Captain, from September last to this February, I lectured to hundreds of students. What are you driving at? I'm driving at murder, Professor. The murder of Marilyn Harper. Murder? Are you kidding? I... We tried to tell him, Fletch, but there seems to be certain evidence. Evidence? Why, oh, this is ridiculous. Save it, Professor. Let me read you something ridiculous from Marilyn's diary. Lucky for us, she kept one. Bill Fletcher is a real darling. It's impossible to think of him as anything but Bill. He has such cute, crinkly eyes. I wore my yellow sweater today. I'm sure he noticed me. Had enough, Fletcher? Or do you want me to read some more ridiculous passages? She had quite a crush on you. Now, look, lots of the students have crushes on their professors. Captain, I wouldn't know Marilyn Harper if she walked through that door. I swear it. You must be convinced by now, Captain. Bill couldn't possibly have done it. I'm not convinced of anything. You can't be serious, Captain. Now, what motive would I have for shooting her? How'd you know she was shot? Was she? Right through the heart. O'Hara, bring in Mrs. Holmes. Professor Fletcher, what are you doing here? And dressed like that, too. Mrs. Holmes, well, I say they got you, too. 
Glad to see you recognize some of your neighbors, Professor. Mrs. Holmes manages my apartment building. Yeah, we know that. Mrs. Holmes, uh, you know this man? Well, yes, sir. It's Professor Fletcher. Apartment 1C. Well, now that we all know each other, Professor, tell us what you were doing in that hour when Marilyn Harper was murdered. Well, uh... I was late getting to the station to meet Liz and Bob, so I must have left the apartment a little before 7. No, wait a minute, I remember. It was 7 o'clock exactly. The chimes were ringing. I got here 20 minutes later. Mrs. Holmes, the report states that about 7 o'clock this evening, you saw what looked to you like a bum hurrying from the area where the murder was committed. Is that right? Yes, that's right. What made you describe this man as a bum? Well, the way he was dressed. Well, I don't know, Captain. He just looked like a bum. Did he see you? No, I don't think so. I just pulled up to the curb in my car, and I was gathering my grocery things when he ran by. Did you get a good look at him? Pretty good. Well, it was dark, though, you know, and uh, he went by pretty fast. Mrs. Holmes, I want you to take a good look at Professor Fletcher and tell me, is this the man you saw? Professor Fletcher? Why, he's one of our oldest tenants. Take a good look, Mrs. Holmes. Is this the man you saw earlier this evening? Well, I couldn't possibly say for sure, Captain. His clothes do look the same, but... Well, no, I couldn't say for sure. Oh, and Professor Fletcher doesn't have that queer-looking hat the other man wore. Hat? Do you have a hat? Put it on. Code two, stand over there. Well, Mrs. Holmes? I can't believe it. I'm holding you, William Fletcher, on suspicion of the murder of Marilyn Harper. District Attorney McHugh is ordering a complete investigation of the circumstances surrounding the crime and will hold an informal hearing in his office this morning. Hmm. Well, the one good thing about this story is my picture in the paper. <laughs> you bum. Yeah, exactly. It's about time the people learned how poorly college professors are paid. You make more than enough for two flats. Don't you ever think about anything else. Here I am, my life in jeopardy, and all you can think about is getting married. Well, we could fix this place up just fine. A little chintz here and here, and, and look at these wonderful candy stripe bars. Evidently, I'm not a murderer in your book. Are you? Oh, baby. Tell you the truth. Morning, Bob. Morning, Fletch. Oh, excuse us, honey. You better get into these things quick. We got a date at the DA's in 15 minutes. Anything I can get you while you're waiting? Uh, you better start taking this thing seriously, Fletch. It doesn't look too good for you, I can tell you that. Oh, you don't expect me to take this absurd thing seriously, do you? You know, you're beginning to sound like you thought I was involved in it. Well, I'm just a cop waiting for all the evidence to come in, that's all. Say, listen, there's a Major Holmes who's dying to get his hooks on you. Who? It's the husband of the woman who identified you last night. What does he want? Well, we'll find out at the DA's. Come on, you better hurry up. I'll wait outside with Liz. It's Elizabeth. Do you recognize this? It's a Luger. Are you familiar with Lugers? I own one. Practically every GI was in Germany during the war latched onto one of those. Yes, well, this one is yours. We found it in your apartment. Are you trying to tell me this Marilyn, whatever her name is, was killed by a Luger? We don't know that yet. Ballistics is checking. But we do know that this gun was fired in the past 24 hours. Now, can you explain why? Very simple. It was fired in my classroom. Your classroom? What were you holding, target practice? No. It was part of an experiment designed to show the fallacy of eyewitness accounts. That's right, sir. I helped him stage it. Yes, but it was your idea, wasn't it, Professor, the, uh, the firing of the gun? Well, yes, of course, but... Mr. McHugh, 
Have you gone back over the records of all the work Professor Fletcher has done cooperating with us? Take the gun business, for instance. He could have arranged to have had it fired in class to avoid suspicion later. Oh, now, come on. That's spreading it a little thin. And the evidence is stacking up against him. Yes, sir. Send him, Major Holmes. Ah, oh, come in, Major. You're Fletcher. You killed him. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Major. Sit down, both of you. Now then, Major, suppose you explain yourself. Just what was Madeline Harper to you? Everything. We were going to be married. When? As soon as my divorce became final. You know, of course, that your wife has already identified Fletcher here. My wife. Our divorce becomes final next week in spite of everything she's done to stop it. Excuse me. Major, did your wife know about Marilyn Harper? Of course. Well, McHugh, that's it. Mrs. Holmes. She's the only one with a real motive. She's losing her husband. Her home is breaking up. What better motive can you have? Are you all through, Sherlock? He's right, Mr. McHugh. Well, let's see how right Mrs. Holmes thinks he is. Yes, sir. Send him Mrs. Holmes. And ballistics might have something to say about the professor's gun, too. And don't forget, he was mentioned all through the diary. Ah, oh, sit down, Mrs. Holmes. Well, Bill, I thought you'd be at the base. Bill? Then I'm not the only Bill in that diary, McHugh. Mrs. Holmes. Professor Fletcher has a theory about this case. It's not much of a theory, but perhaps you'd like to comment on it. Oh, yes, sir. Well, the professor's theory is that uh, you kill Marilyn Harper. Not a very neighborly theory, is it, Mrs. Holmes? Well, no, it's not, Professor Fletcher. Why would I want to kill anyone? You had two good reasons. You were losing your husband, your home was being broken up. Well, what about it, Mrs. Holmes? Professor Fletcher has a fine theory, but... Murder. That's a terrible thing, Mr. McHugh. It's more terrible than losing your husband. We didn't get along too well together, but I know one thing. She could never commit murder. Yes? The ballistics report is here, sir. Aye, right, Senator. Ballistics prove beyond a doubt that it was your gun, Professor, that killed Madeline Harper. Oh, Liz. Why don't they lock up Mrs. Holmes or, or Major Holmes? If she's the one that did it, I'm sure of it. Now, don't get excited, Fletch. You'll only have to be in here until they get complete statements from the Holmeses. Then you'll have a chance to make your own statement. Oh, oh what an actress that Mrs. Holmes is. Murder is a terrible thing, Mr. McHugh. Whew. She's the one I'll stake my reputation on it. Sure, you're right, but how to prove it? Well, to me, it's very simple. She saw me, she recognized me. She made sure I didn't see her. She was in her car. That's right. Then she went to my apartment, she got my gun. Well, how'd you that... get in? Well, she manages the apartment building. She has a pass key. She took my gun, she went over to Marilyn's apartment. She didn't have any trouble getting in. Marilyn knew her slightly. She had nothing to be afraid of. And after the murders committed, she went back to my apartment, replaced the gun. And when the police came, she just happened to volunteer. She saw a bum running away. Oh, and hallelujah, am I a bum. Must be a way to prove it, Fletch, but how? Well, the officer will be here in a minute to let you out. They're sending me free? No, we're going back to McHugh's office. He wants to question all three of you together. Bob, was there anything in those reports at all? Anything unusual found at the scene of the crime? What did the room look like? Was there anything, anything at all to go on? No, the room was in order. No rough stuff. The victim was dressed in a robe. Must have just finished fixing her hair or something. There was a bottle of peroxide on the floor. Nothing else? Come on, think hard. No, that's all I have. Chair overturned. Nothing you wouldn't expect to find. Come on, Fletch, let's go. <laughs> We have 
have completed statements from all three of them. Now all we have to do is break one of them down. Major Holmes, you were intimately involved with the victim. You appear all through the diary and your fingerprints were found in her apartment. They should be. I was there often enough. I told you we were going to be married. Yes, sir. We checked with the Air Force and your story holds up. You were on duty and the records show that. So, well, that exonerates you. Now, Mrs. Holmes, you had strong enough motives to commit the crime. Your husband and your home are about to be lost to you. And you did have enough time. Excuse me. I think I might be able to save you some time. Are you ready to confess, Professor? No, not quite. Now, the most damaging evidence against me is Mrs. Holmes' testimony that she saw me running away from the scene of the crime. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Plus the fact that it was your gun that was identified as a murder weapon. Yes, but we both agree that someone else might have fired that, don't we? Now, if you'll allow me to ask Mrs. Holmes a few questions, I might be able to clear this up. Now, what do you say, Mrs. Holmes? Well, I have nothing to hide. All right, Fletcher, we'll make it brief. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Holmes, as you know, I conduct a class in criminology at the university. Recently, we've been conducting experiments in eyewitness accounts. I happen to share the belief with several other criminologists that the eye can be quite deceiving. Are you trying to say that I didn't see you last night? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just going to leave that to you. But did you see me? I've already said that I did. You're positive? Absolutely. I have excellent eyesight. And you also have an excellent memory. Yes, I have. Now, may we test it? Now, you look right at me. What color tie is the district attorney wearing? Well, this is ridiculous. Ah, uh, no, no. Now, you've been looking at him all morning, and I thought, with well, your excellent eyesight and your excellent memory. Red. There's a folder on his desk. What color is that? Brown. What color shirt is he wearing? Blue. It's remarkable, Mrs. Holmes. That's three out of three. It's amazing. Now, you knew Marilyn Harper. Now, quickly, what color eyes? Blue eyes. Short or tall? Tall. Color hair? Blonde. Major. Brunette. What color hair, Mrs. Holmes? Blonde. The peroxide. The victim had been a brunette her entire life, except for one night. She just finished bleaching her hair when she was killed. Now, only the murderer could have remembered her as a blonde. Yes, sir. Send him a stenographer. We need another statement from you, Mrs. Holmes. A confession. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying before I was uh, interrupted, the human eye can be quite deceiving. One sees what one wants to see. Here we go again. All right, Larry. Thank you. I'm sorry. The police department forgot to give you back your Luger. All right, class, quickly, an experiment. What exactly do you think you see? <laughs> hmm. That's correct. I think we find ourselves in complete agreement. What you're looking at is a woman. Mm -hmm. 